join us. So let's see if I can switch him on. Hey, Ray, how are you, my friend? Great, yourself? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for taking the time to give me a buzz this morning. Anytime, anytime. So, Ray, i got to ask you, Ripley, Tennessee, Ripley High School, you guys had some Major League Baseball players come out of there. Is that a small little gem? It's a small town, very small town. Yeah, I was. I was. In that area. Go ahead. No, I was looking through there, and there was there was a couple guys. Um, Jim Jim Hickman back in the early '60s who played for the Cubs, and then uh, Cayenne Norfolk who was drafted by the Nationals. That's my cousin. Oh, okay, cool. That's awesome. Um, and then you, so, so, go ahead, bud. Go ahead. Yeah, it's so funny. I look small small area. You know, we had. Um, you know, Jim Hickman right there, Henning and myself, and Ty Young. They had another young kid got drafted by the Phillies, but he only played one year again and going back to school was Ed, Ed Grammer. Okay. But then right there in Henning, right there, you know, that's where Alex Haley is from. And then, Ray, you went on and played at Lambeth University down in Jackson, is that correct? Yes. Now, what conference is that? Is that the Mid South? Yeah, Mid South is, uh, you know, NIA school. Okay, that's what I thought down there in the NAIA conference. Yep. With, uh, you know, Freedom. Back then, it had Belmont, Free Hardman, Cumberland, Union, uh, Lambeth, Christian Brothers, Lane. So, yeah, it was a pretty good conference, you know. Cumberland always won that league because they went and got Juco players every year. Yeah, and then, and then, Ray, I was looking back too here. So, you got drafted in the eighth round of the amateur draft back in 95. Uh, before making your major league debut in '99, you made it with the Cubs. What was that experience like when you were when you got drafted to hear your name? Well, it was like a dream come true. You know, every kid playing when they're little, you know, you're in the backyard, you're pretending to be that major league player, and then you finally, you know, get drafted. You know, go through the minor leagues for a couple of years, and then you finally get that call to where, okay, you got your major league call up and you, you know you're flying up and you're excited you're nervous you're scared and then you finally you know get in that game against Atlanta my first game it was just you know putting you know you go in and pitch and then you get back to your hotel room that night and you realize man I just made my major league debut yeah and I always say this when I when I talk to some former major league baseball players but I think of all the professional sports I think it's so hard to get to the big leagues in baseball just because there's so many different Leagues and single A, double A, triple A. There's all these wooden, but you know, there's all these different leagues. It's so hard to get there. Yeah, it is. And you put in the work and you just try to be that guy. See, like they always say, you know, you're always looking to see what's happening in the big leagues, but you realize you're still in the minor league. And like you say, you go to spring training and you look at how many guys are there. And you're like, man, you know, can I make it? Can I make it? So it's, it's a lot of just you got to realize. Really trust on yourself and just wait for that opportunity. Don't try to make that opportunity. And Ray, what's the biggest challenge when you go from the minor leagues? Because everybody's waiting to get that, hear their name, to get that call up. What's the biggest difference going from the minors to uh, the major leagues? We got to realize when you get there, there's always someone behind you trying to take that spot. So you got to be confident, but you got to be that guy to where if you have a great day to, today. You can't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow you go out and not get an out. So you got to be humble. You got to understand that you know you're lucky to be in this spot, and you just hopefully every day you go out and perform, and you know just look ahead and don't look back. Yeah, and I can't imagine what would it be like to finally step on the mound in your in your major league baseball debut. I probably would have looked around and said, "Wow, I finally got here. All that hard work finally paid off." Yeah, like I said, I remember that night in Atlanta, you know, and finally the bullpen phone ring, and you get that call, and it's like, hey, King, are you in? And you're jogging to the mound, and i never forget, you know, we're playing in Atlanta. I get on the mound, I'm warming up, warming up, and Benito sent out with my catcher, and I was like, you know, one fastball, two curve, three slotter. He's like, hey, kid, just throw it. And I got Mark Grace and Gary Gatti just laughing, and to where I get on the mound, and there's like, you know, now batting, number 10, Chipper Jones in the stadium just goes crazy, <laughs> and I'm like, you know, the year he won MVP and the first hit our face, I get a double play and get out of it. So it's just like, wow, did this just happen? 
You know, when Ray, you played on some some good teams, and and I want to talk about the the middle relief, the long re- relievers, because I don't think you guys really get enough credit because most of the time you guys come in the games, you know, it, it's either a hold hold the lead or you're playing from behind, but there's runners on base. That position, I think, in baseball is just as important as the closers. Yeah, that's what I, I say to a lot of guys. You know, I had a couple of buddies. My buddy Tom, we were talking about that one day. And it's just like as a reliever, you know, I'm coming in with, you know, guys on first, second, one out, two outs, and I'm facing, you know, the Barry Bonds, the Ken Griffey Juniors, and guys like that to where, you know, if I make one mistake, the game's over or the game's tied. And I, we were joking like we're reporters, you know. You come to the locker room. If I do my job nine times out of ten, nobody talks to me. Right. But the one time I give it up, everybody got a microphone in your face. Yeah. And then as a closer, you know, he's coming in most of the time in the ninth inning with nobody on, nobody out. So if he gets in trouble, it's his fault. Now, Ray, when you when you were in college, were you were you a starting pitcher? Were you a middle reliever in, in college? I was a starter in college, and then uh, I threw a lot my junior year. And so when I got drafted by Cincinnati, he was like, you threw a lot, we're going to put you in the bullpen. So I was like, you know, okay. And then the next year, I went back to the rotation. So I started, you know, A ball, double A. And then when I got to triple A, and then the Cubs was like, you know, you can be a reliever in the big leagues or start in triple A, which one would you prefer? I was like, I think I'll take a reliever in the big leagues. Sure. Hey, Ray, I have a quick question for you. You mentioned some big names as far as Ken Griffey Jr. is one of them you mentioned. Uh, who, was, who was probably the hardest uh, batter that you had had in your career that you had faced off against, or were there a few guys that were the hardest that you had had to pitch against? Well, I think, number one, you know, anytime you're going up against Barry Barnes, and I was fortunate enough to have some good numbers against him, but I think the only guy that, you know, intimidated because you knew you weren't going to get him out was Tony Glenn. You know, here's a guy that, yeah, you, know, you watch him take you know take batting practice every day. This guy was like just paint line, 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 middle, middle, middle. Then I faced him a couple times, and I get two strikes. I was like, all right, let me try to bury this pitch. And he seemed like he knew what was coming, so he was you know throwing slider down the way, he'll flip it down third base line. You try to come in, he'll turn it down first base line. You know, you try to go up, you just go up the middle to where yeah, you know, that's probably the best hitter that I say I've faced. But you know, like that Bob Griffin. Casey, all them guys are great hitters, but you know the late Tony Gwynn was by far the best hitter that I've ever faced. And Ray, I want to go back to your time in, with the Brewers uh, in early 2000 because I, I I think you got a chance to play uh, with a great with a great pitching staff there. But um, Davey Lopes was one of my favorite managers. Uh, what was it like to play for him? I love Davey Lopes, and I tell everybody Davey really gave me my first real chance in the big league. Uh, I, had, I was fortunate enough to play for Davey Ice in the Arizona Fall League in 96. And, and he just took, took a hold of me and was like, you know, you're going to have a bright future. And he introduced me to my agent, Tony Antonazio and Dave Myers out in San Diego. And Davey was kind of like a mentor to me. And when I finally got traded over, Davey got to a lot of people, but you know, he's the greatest guy that I've ever played for. That, you know, there's no shooting around the bush. Everything was just straight forth. And, of course, he just came with the Brewers, and we didn't have the greatest team. And I still think he should have had another chance at a manager's job in the big leagues because he's a guy that came to the ballpark every day and just understanding, okay, we got one job to do, and that's put the best players on the field and try to win. And unfortunately, we just didn't have the horses to go to the track every day. Right, and I think that that's the starting rotation. I think Ben Sheets and Jamie Wright were part of that. And I think Weathers came out of the bullpen, right, from Milwaukee with you. Yeah, yeah, Ben that just came up. Um, then with Jamie Wright, and, uh, Jeff D'Amico, that guy had the best turbo I've ever seen. But then in the bullpen, Weathers, myself, Dijon. So you know, we had some guys that could, you know, throw it up there. We just, you know, you know, somebody just, you know, that three to four game, we just couldn't get to that five to four. Right. Now, Ray, when you went over to Atlanta, you you appeared in over eighty games, um, which I think to this day is um, the second most of any single. Um, season. I think you had 80 in Atlanta in 03, and then 84 in 01 with uh, with the Brewers. That was a really good staff, too. John Smoltz was the closer there. Maddox was still there. And I think one of the best outfields ever assembled with Chipper, Andrew, and Gary Sheffield. Talk about that team. That was a great year for you. I'd never forget, though. When I got that phone call in December, it was like, ready to trade you to Atlanta. And then, you know, you think of the Braves, you know. You, growing up in Ripley right there, you know, you had PBS and CL. 
and you know the Cubs and the Braves. Yeah. But the Braves were just. You walk into that locker room. I remember first day of spring training. We walk in and there's Bobby Cox, full uniform, spikes on. He's like, all right, boys, let's get ready for October. I'm like, I'm just coming from Milwaukee where we lost 100 games. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we come in and, you know, and then you look around and, you know, there's Mags, there's Smoke, there's Mike Hampton, Gary Sheffield, and Chipper, you know, Chipper Jones or whatever. It was just like, wow. And then the season started, and I'll never forget, you know, with Cole and Giles hitting at the top of the lineup and Harvey Lopez hitting seventh. To where before we can get dressed get to the bullpen, most times we're already up two or three nothing in the first and second inning. To where you know we won a hundred something games, and yeah, you know, unfortunately we got through playoffs and ran into um, you know Kerry Wood and Mark Pryor. But that team was just a phenomenal. You talking about the outfield? Which I look in the outfield and Andrew Jones seemed like he's playing at second base and ball hitting outfield, he just running down yep. like a deer. And then you know Sheffield and then Chipper. It was just one of them teams where, you know, all around was a solid team, and unfortunately we didn't go far in the playoffs. But, you know, by far it's one of the best teams I've been on. And I always, I always used to think as as a young kid growing up that it was always the Braves reminded me of the Patriots. The Patriots were always in the Super Bowl, always in the playoffs. You know, Bill Belichick, and it was always Bobby Cox in Atlanta. You could always count on them to make a deep, deep playoff run. And you appeared in 80 games. That's a lot of games out of the bullpen. Well, it's just, I had that mentality where I went to the ballpark every day expecting to pitch. And when you expect things, it's not easy when it happens where, oh, I hope I get in, I hope I don't get in. Then you got that wishy-washy. But, you know, I was fortunate enough. I had a rubber arm to where I tried to minimize my pitches in the bullpen. And when I came in the game, I tried to go for ground balls. I wanted guys looking for strikeouts because I figured if I get one or two ground balls, get a double play, and I get out of the inning throwing seven, eight pitches, I can pitch tomorrow. Right. Yep. And, and and you also had a good run in St. Louis too. I think you had your career best there. Was it thirty one holds? I think you had there, and appeared yeah, in St. Louis that year. I think I had like eighty six games and thirty one holes. And you know, same thing with Larusa there. He put you in a great spot to where you've been in that division. You know, you know you have the you know the Cubs, the Brewers, you know the Reds with all them left. To where you go to ballpark area, you look at the lineup. Okay, I got to get a chance to pitch. And Tony. Did a great job matching up to where I come in at, you know, I knew I'd come in between the sixth and eighth inning to get a, get a guy, one or two guys out. And it's just like a reliever. Once you get on a roll, everything just, you know, goes fast and you're in that zone to where you just got to enjoy it. And, you know, fortunate enough, I racked up some, some holes. You get 31 holes was a pretty good season. Yeah, absolutely. And, Ray, for some of the young, young baseball players, and really I'm going to say this, young players in general could be any sport – that have that dream to, to to play professionally, whether it's baseball, you get to the NFL. It's, it's a really small percentage of players that get to that level. What would you tell these young kids? Well, number one, I tell young kids play every sport there is. And I don't like now when you get to oh, I got to play baseball, I can't play basketball, I can't play football. You're a kid, enjoy every sport you can, and you're going to realize what sport you're you're, you're better at. And you just, you know, then you get to that high school level, then you try to focus in on exactly what I want to do. And just, you know, every guy can't make it to the league, but you can take that one sport, football, baseball, basketball, get a chance to go to college, and you never know from there. And especially baseball, you know, baseball is such a sport where this little white baseball has taken me a lot of places, from sure. college to the minor league, the big league, going over to Japan and, you know, meeting different people, but... You just got to have fun at what you do because if you don't have fun, it's become miserable. It's kind of like that job. You know, you find a job you love, you never work a day in your life. And that was like baseball or basketball. You see the guys coming up to where these kids are trying to be one dimensional too early to where, you know, I love the two way sport, three way sport, to where you got to enjoy it and have fun. And, Ray, who, who would be some, whether it's coaches, players, you know, influential people in your life that have been a big part of your, not only just baseball career, but your career in general over the years? Well, I've been fortunate enough. My high school coach, Tom Mathis, you know, I just turned 47, and I still talk to Coach Mathis probably, you know, once a week or, you know, we check in to where he's got to came in my, after my freshman year. We were terrible. We won, like, three games my freshman year. He came in my sophomore year and just turned that program around, and he was always in my corner, like, you know, the do's and the don'ts or what do you need to do, or or if I'm in the minor leagues or college, I'm struggling. I can always pick up the phone and call him, and he kind of like, you know, put a smile on my face. And 
Yeah, I love the guy to death. Like, you know, I lost my father in 04, and he's been that kind of guy I've been talking to since 04, no matter what's going good or bad. He's always been in my corner. No, that's great. Uh, gr- that's a great story. I always like to ask that question. As you see who's impacted and, and really help people along their journeys here. One last thing I wanted to ask you, what's, what's life outside of baseball for Ray King these days? Right now, I'm just enjoying it. You know, I was doing some stuff with CPS, and that kind of slowed down with the COVID and all that, to where now I'm just looking at to where I'm looking to get back in, help some kids kind of understand that, you know, you can't go to a big school. There's NIA, JUCO colleges, so trying to get back into coaching and just loving the game of baseball. To where there's been times where I get text messages about kids, or I'm driving down the road and I see a high school game or a little league game, I'll stop and pull over and look at it to where I just, you know, the baseball has done so good for me that I want to give back in every way possible. Well, that's great, Ray. Your, your career was fantastic to uh, to follow here, and I learned an awfully lot about it. You're welcome on this show anytime, and uh, let's do it again during baseball season. We'll talk some baseball. I appreciate any time. I love talking about the game of baseball because I think it's the best sport out there. All right, man. Well, we appreciate it, and hopefully we'll talk to you during the spring. All right, thanks a lot. Have a good one. You got it. That was Ray King, former Major League Baseball player. Great career. And, uh, Mike, you said it earlier before coming on the broadcast, but it's just – the the game the importance of a middle reliever you know to get that hole to go on with runners on base I think you're right it's just as important really as the, the closer. unsung hero you know I mean they have to eat up innings uh, to kind of bridge that gap between the starter and the closer and I don't think it gets talked about enough and he he touched on it beautifully there I mean he says you know when you do your job like nobody wants to talk to you but the reporters will all glom on your yeah. back and stuff when you make a mistake and that seems to show up I, for- I, I thought it was really amazing like this is one thing I one of the big things I took from the interview was the fact that the way he said that like if I got in there and it was like the seventh inning and rather try to strike these guys out yeah. I try to pitch them into a ground